When one man saved a wolf and her cubs, he never expected what would happen four years later. Wolves are top predators, they are vicious, clever, and fast, but even they need a helping hand every now and then. This story took place deep in the Alaskan wilderness. One sunny spring day, a prospector called John was looking for gold along Coho Creek on the southeastern side of Alaska's Caprino Island. As soon as he emerged from the forest that inhabited the island, he suddenly froze. No more than 20 feet away from him, standing in a bog, was a huge Alaskan timberwolf. It had gotten caught in a trap that John knew belonged to one of his hunter friends called George. Had John not been out that day, the wolf surely would have perished as George had died the previous week from a heart attack. John started to approach the wolf, hoping that he would be able to help it. Confused and scared at the approach, the wolf backed away, straining at the chain of the trap as it tried to pull itself free. That was when John noticed something very important, the wolf was a female, and her teats were full of milk. This meant that somewhere on the island, there was a den full of hungry pups just waiting for their mother. John stopped in his spot, hoping that he wouldn't frighten the mama wolf anymore. He took a good look at the wolf and guessed that she hadn't been trapped long, maybe even only a few days. That was a good sign as it meant her pups were probably still alive. With young ones to care for, the female wolf wouldn't have strayed too far from the den, so her cubs wouldn't be more than a few miles away. But now John had a problem, he needed to help free the female canine so that she would be able to get back to her pups. However, John was worried that if he set her free, the wolf would turn aggressive and try to tear him to pieces in an effort to protect her babies. Fearful for his life, John came up with another plan that he hoped would work instead. He decided to search for her cubs so that he could bring them to their mother. He began to look for any tracks or signs of where the mother had come from. He eventually found a few remaining prints in the patches of snow around the edge of the bog. The prospector followed the tracks, which led him half a mile through the forest and then up a rock-strewn slope. Finally, at the base of an enormous spruce, John saw the wolf's den. John walked up to the den cautiously. He didn't want to scare the already shy and cautious pups away, as he knew getting them out of their den would be tricky enough already. The den was silent, giving no indication of whether the cubs were still in there or not. But John had to try to get their attention in order for this plan to work. He began by imitating the call of their mother, a high-pitched squeak. But still, there was no sound or movement from the den. John didn't give up and began his calls again. This time, four tiny pups appeared at the mouth of the cave. They slowly walked up to John and began suckling at his fingers. They couldn't have been more than a few weeks old, and they were obviously starving. One by one, John picked up the pups and placed them into his burlap bag. With the baby wolves securely held in his bag, John turned around and headed back down the slope towards their mother. Upon returning to the trapped mama wolf, she quickly stood to attention when she noticed John coming back to her. She let out a high-pitched whine as if she knew that the man had her babies with him. John released the pups from his bag and within moments they were all suckling at their mother's belly. Even though the pups were all fed and well now that they were back with their mother, John still didn't know how to free the female canine. Every time that he tried to get close to the little family, the mama would growl at him and warn him back, resigned that he wouldn't be able to free her straight away. John went in search of something for the mama wolf to eat to keep her strength up. He came across the leg of a deer carcass and cut off a hindquarter. John knew that if he was ever going to free the trapped animal, he would have to gain her trust, and food was usually the best way to do this. It would take time, though, something that John had plenty of. The prospector made a rough shelter for himself near the wolf family and was soon asleep. The next morning, he was awoken by four fluffy bundles of fur sniffing at his face. It seemed he had earned the wolf pup's trust but still had a ways to go with their mama. Over the next few days, John split his time between prospecting and trying to help the trapped canine. He would throw her venison and would play with her babies, hoping to show that he was not a threat. 
Each time that the man would interact with the animals, he would edge a little bit closer to the trap. In the evening of the fifth day, John was delivering the female wolf's daily dose of venison when he noticed something encouraging. The wolf wagged her tail slightly, delighted that it looked like the animal finally trusted him. John sat down only eight feet away from her, so close that if she had wanted to, the wolf could have broken his arm with just a snap of her jaws. The man then drifted to sleep surrounded by the wolf family. The next day, John awoke to the sound of the pups nursing. He carefully petted them in greeting. To his surprise, the mother wolf didn't growl or even move. Taking this as a good sign, the man then put his hand on the wolf's trapped leg. She flinched but didn't make a move to stop him. Finally, after days of trying to gain her trust, all of John's efforts were paying off. He examined the steel trap and saw that its jaws had only caught two of the animal's toes. They were swollen and cut, but she wouldn't lose the paw, which was more than the man had been hoping for. John found the release catch and quickly pressed down on it. Now finally free, John expected the mama wolf to gather her pups and disappear into the woods. But she did something much different, which shocked John entirely. The wolf slowly crept up to the man and began to lick his hands and fingers. John was astonished. It went against all his knowledge about wolves, but he was more than happy to let it happen. After a while, the mother decided that she was ready to leave, so she gathered up her pups and walked towards the forest before disappearing completely. She turned back to John as if asking him to follow her. John understood, gathered his belongings, and followed the animal. They eventually ended up ascending Kupernuf Mountain and came upon an alpine meadow. Along the edge of the meadow, lurking in the shadows, was a wolf pack of around nine adults and four nearly full-grown pups. The mama wolf and her pups approached the pack, and after a few minutes of greeting, the entire family broke into howling. John watched from a distance, amazed that he was witnessing something so spectacular. As night fell, the man set up his camp. By the light of his fire, he could see multiple wolf shapes darting in and out of the shadows, but he wasn't scared. He knew that they were simply curious about him. As dawn broke the next day, John knew it was time to leave. He gathered up his things with the mama wolf watching the entire time. As he reached the far side of the meadow, John looked back one last time. The mama wolf and her pups were sitting where he had left them, watching him. John waved his final goodbye, to which the mother wolf let out a mournful howl. He then turned around and descended the mountain. He would never expect what would happen next. For years after this encounter with the wolves, John returned to Coho Creek after serving in World War II. As he walked through the familiar woods, something caught his eye. It was the rusted steel trap that he had saved the mama wolf from all those years ago. Seeing the trap, John suddenly got a strange feeling. Something was telling him to return to the meadow where he had last said goodbye to the wolf family. Following his instincts, John climbed the mountain until he was at the meadow. He let out a long, low wolf call, something that he had done many times before, and to his surprise, a howl responded. John called again, and once again, a howl responded. He then noticed a large, dark shape moving in his direction. As it crossed the meadow, he could see that it was a timber wolf, but it wasn't just any old wolf. It was the one that he had saved. The animal stopped just in front of John, her bushy tail wagging slightly. Then, as quick as she had appeared, she disappeared into the woods again. John left the island not long after, and while he never saw the animal again, the memory of her and her pups stuck with him for the rest of his life. There is an old village at the foot of a mountain. About 30 families live here, including Mrs. Wong. Mrs. Wong is 60 years old this year. She is pretty healthy and she can walk fast. It's hard to believe she's already 60 years old. She has some medical skills, so villagers will ask her for help when they are sick or give birth. Therefore, Mrs. Wong is respected by all the villagers. She is the only doctor in the village. One day, Mrs. Wong was packing her herbs at home and found that a kind of herb was gone. The weather was very good that day, so she wanted to pick some herbs in the mountains. 
She carried a basket on her back and climbed up. She often collects herbs so she knows where that herb grows. It didn't take her long to find it. She planned to pick some other herbs so she wouldn't climb up mountains often. Then she began to look for herbs. She was going home when her basket was full. It was still early in the evening, and she was walking leisurely. Halfway she heard a mournful howl. She had been living at the foot of the mountain for many years so she knew it's the cry of a wolf. She was frightened so she quickened her pace. However, the wolf appeared in front of her after a while. This wild wolf was lying on the grass. There was a pool of blood on the ground. She was not afraid suddenly because it was no longer a threat to her. The wolf in pain found her and howled fiercely at her. Judging from wolf's bulging belly and the blood on the ground, she knew that this wolf had a difficult delivery. As a doctor, she respected every life and would not give up every life. It's against her profession to leave the patient alone, whether the patient is human or animal. Wong walked towards the female wolf slowly. This female wolf howled fiercely when Wong was approaching it gradually. Although the wolf couldn't attack her, its sound was still loud. Wong approached it carefully and said, Don't be afraid. I'll help you. Don't be afraid. Perhaps the female wolf got her kindness and stopped howling. Wong stood beside the wolf and reached out her hand to touch it tentatively. The wolf did not like it. When Wong stroked it, it bared its fangs and kept vigilant. If Wong tried to hurt it, it would fight back desperately. At this moment, Wong suddenly thought of pills she had been carrying. It's for women who are bleeding profusely during childbirth. Although she didn't know if it has any effect on animals, this is the only way. She put the pill near the wolf's mouth and said, it can save you, just swallow it. The wolf was not hostile to her at this time. Maybe it knew Wang might be able to save it. When Mrs. Wang put the pill near its mouth, the wolf swallowed it. After a while, the wolf gradually gained some strength and her eyes became brighter. At this moment, its legs suddenly shook a few times. Finally it successfully gave birth to four pups. The wolf just gave birth and was very weak. It needed some nutrition. Mrs. Wong didn't have any food in her hands. After looking up at the sky, she found it's almost dusk. Her home is not far from the forest. She said to the wolf, wait for me. I'll go home and get you something to eat. You need nutrition now. She picked up her basket and walked home, wanting to get home before it's completely dark. She returned home soon and took out a piece of pork in the kitchen. She got it after seeing a patient yesterday. She looked at the meat and thought it's not enough, so she ran to the hunter. After she got there, she said, Lou, I want some meat. A lot of meat. The hunter smiled and said, okay. Why do you want to eat meat today? You didn't accept the meat I gave you before. Mrs. Wong didn't want to explain it. She said, I want to eat meat recently. Lou gave her a large piece of meat. Just when she was about to pay, she was stopped. Lou said, Mrs. Wong, you don't need to pay. You are the only doctor in our village. We thank you for treating us. This meat is free. After hearing this, Mrs. Wong refused. Lou didn't take her money, so she had to put the money back and said, Okay, I'll take it. I will try my best to help you guys in the future. After she finished speaking, she went back to her home. It's completely dark. She took the torch and climbed up the mountain with some pieces of meat. The wolf was still there and licking its pups when she got there. Wong held up the torch and stood in front of the wolf. The wolf called out happily after seeing her. If it wasn't weak at the time, maybe it would have circled around Wong. Wong squatted in front of it, stroked its head and put the meat in front of it. Wong said, eat it. It's enough for you. This is all I can do. You must struggle to live. The wolf seemed to understand it and howled in a low voice to express its gratitude. Mrs. Wong left there. The wolf successfully passed this difficult time after getting this meat. 
Wang thought it was her mission as a doctor and didn't expect the wolf to save her in the future. One day, Wang was cooking medicinal herbs at home. She's old so gets tired easily. The herb has to be cooked for a long time, so she plans to take a nap. Then she slept soundly. She woke up choked by the smoke and found a fire. She wanted to run outside, however. The beam on the roof fell off and blocked her. She was suddenly relieved because she was satisfied with her life. Maybe this is fate. Neighbors rushed over after hearing it. Because the fire was too strong, no one could get in. When they were anxious, they suddenly heard a wolf howling. Then a wolf rushed into the house. One, who was almost fainted by the smoke in the house, saw a wolf. She fainted while wondering if she was hallucinating. The wolf came to her and dragged her out. At this time, villagers realized that it was a wolf that just ran in. This wolf was saved by Wang. Since it recovered, it has often wandered around Wang's house looking for opportunities to repay her. This time it was nearby and saw that Wang's house was surrounded by fire and there were many people outside her house. It didn't find Wang in the crowd so it rushed in. After it pulled Wang out, there were flames on them. The wolf howled in pain. A villager showered them with a hose. Some villagers put Wang in a neighbor's house. She was unconscious from the smoke inhalation but was not injured. She just needed a break. In order to save her, the wolf's hair was burned. Some hairs were burnt severely. After saving Wang, the wolf followed her closely. Villagers knew it saved Wang so didn't drive it away. No one dared to give it medicine because as soon as someone approached it, it would start to attack. It didn't take long for Wang to wake up. She looked at the wolf lying beside her bed and realized that what she saw before she fell unconscious was not a hallucination. This wolf saved her. She recognized that this is the wolf she had rescued. Wang looked at its burned skin and burst into tears. She didn't expect that this wolf desperately saved her. Fortunately, under the treatment of Wang, the female wolf recovered. From that day on, there seemed to be a special tacit understanding between them. During the day, the female wolf goes hunting in the mountains. At night, she protects Wang's home. It accompanies Wang when she collects herbs in the mountains to prevent her from being attacked by wild animals. As a doctor, Wang saved this female wolf from childbirth. Out of gratitude, the female wolf is willing to repay her with its own life. The relationship between humans and animals is more pure. I am kind to you because you are kind to me. Therefore, we must learn to live in harmony with animals. That's it for this video. Subscribe for more interesting stories.